You're listening to Ulti World's coverage of the AUDL. It's the New York Empire and Philadelphia Phoenix get set here for the opening pull. With the Empire coming out on defense, and this is the first time these teams will face off, so we're going to see a little bit of testing and maybe a bit of a chess match here in the early going. And yeah. we see early on Matt Esser with the disc in the middle of the field. Yeah, you'll notice, Charlie, that you know, pretty short pull from you know what we're used to seeing. As David Brandolph goes to the end zone, Lu Wang in coverage, and Kyle Wolf just can't quite come down with it. A good throw, but just past his outstretched hand, bounced off his fingertips. Kyle Wolf, someone we're going to say a lot today as well. Lu Wang. Advances the disc there to Ben Ivers. Yeah, the Empire D-line has been doing a good job lately of converting their turns. Last weekend against the Breeze, they scored more than half the team's points. Yeah, for most of the season, the, the D-line uh, has been a very uh, solid aspect of the Empire's game and kept them in a lot of contests that their offense should uh, not have been in. Attacking with speed here right now. They go to the end zone. No one in the area. And that's a score for the Empire and a break right off the bat. Joe Babino comes down with a disc in the end zone for the Empire. And it's one to nothing here early on in the first quarter. But the Empire working it straight up through that wind on that first possession, which could be huge. And now the Phoenix will have to go upwind on offense. Never a place that you want to be early in a game. Yeah, and you know, you never want to start a game by giving up a break. Even though this isn't the uh John. John Stavinga whips it across to Sean Anderson, now in the middle with Brandolph. Yes, yeah, you know, not the structure of the uh, USA Ultimate game. A break's not as big of a deal, but it's still not the way you want to start. Kyle Wolf looking deep here. Disc floating up, misread by the Empire defender, and some contact there, no foul call. Ken Wells comes down with it. And Wells is going to go to the end zone. And that's Esser with the score. We're going to see a lot of him today. He's one of the stats leaders in the AUDL, and it's all tied up here one-to-one. -one. It's a beautiful day in New York, about 80 degrees out on the field right now. We are just outside the Rockaways, a beautiful set of beaches here in New York, and it is pretty far out in Brooklyn. But here comes the Empire offense, the first time this game, with St. Carnegie swings across the field, and that's Bell. Aaron Bell gets across to Auerbuck, and there's an easy D there as Esser poached off in coverage, made an easy play in the lane. Zachary Thurston with it. Yeah, it looked like the Empire uh, Thur just got a little ahead of himself. They were moving the disc across the field pretty nicely and just got a little greedy with uh, the yardage. Anthony Bushick going to the end zone, but that's over the head of Jonathan Palumbo. So the Empire offense heading back up the field. Coach Bell, a little bobble on the sideline, but he hangs on now looking. It's going to center the disc here. CJ Ouellette with it. Ouellette goes to Katz. Doesn't connect. Ooh. But a great grab. Seth Canetti did that last week as well. Had a couple of heads up throws. And there's Aaron Bell flipping it out into space to the end zone. And he'll be looking for Goose Santosis. And that's a great throw. Santosis with the score. Two to one, Empire over the Phoenix. But, you know, in terms of going vertically up and down the field, the crosswind, you know, a lot of players actually prefer it because it uh, kind of helps uh, the disc float a little bit longer. Stavinga takes the pull, gets it over to Brandolph. Put the pressure! Put the pressure! Brandolph swings to the far sideline. He'll go up the field for Wolf. Wolf can't connect. That disc hits the turf before it gets to Esser's hands. So the Empire now with a chance to get this downwind break they were looking for earlier. It's Luong with the disc. Yeah, I think it's important to note early on, Charlie, that you know the score to this point has been caused mainly by unforced errors on both sides. You know, blown coverages, turnovers on uh, you know poor decisions. Alone Brown looking to the end zone for Wong. And he's going to be all alone in the back of the end zone. A sort of misread there by the Phoenix defender. And it's 3-1 to one Empire. They get the downwind break. And it's not a whole lot of... And we expected maybe we would see a chess match here early, but we haven't seen that so much yet. It looks like defenses has been, have been pretty standard so far. Nothing. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen a double team yet. And teams feeling each other out a little bit. The Empire with the early break. Yeah, you know, it, Charlie doesn't seem... Really, that uh, coaching or strategy have played into this too much. It looks like we're about to see our first double team of the day. Um, but, you know, both teams have looked shaky. Uh, 
despite seeming to have pretty good control of the disc in the wind. They beat the double team up the line. Now they swing it across the field into the space. This is exactly what the Phoenix were talking about before the game, expecting that double team. Now into the middle. You know, th this is a perfect type of day for uh, the Empire to play with their different double teams and defensive looks because they want those extra uh, bad discs up in the air. And the Phoenix go into the end zone for the score. Nick Ongpauko with it, three to two, Empire. As we've seen earlier in the year, uh, you know the the Empire they kind of put themselves in a little bit of danger by breaking out their double team because you know like we just saw, if it's quickly beat, then it's you know tough to recover when you have two guys just covering one. There's always a man open. Pull up, three to two here, first quarter. The Empire pick up on offense, and the disc getting centered there to Santosis. He's going to go up the field to Bell. Bell with the flick to Carnegie. Carnegie bounces off his hands, but he's going to have a chance to recover with no defender in the area. Esser covering Carnegie. A great matchup we'll want to watch more of. And then a quick turnover there from Ouellette. So now the Phoenix with a chance to tie this game up as they go up the field. A little bit of a crosswind still. Lighter than it was at the start of the game. Disc comes around to Boucher. He's going to flick it into the middle. Now across the field, Zachary Thurston. Using the field width well, the Phoenix. Thurston holding. Yeah, the Phoenix, uh, it's tough to tell what the set they've come out in is. They're moving pretty fluidly, just cycling through. Times it looks like a bird stack, times it looks like a hoe. And that throw doesn't connect. Just a bad throw. The cutter was open, but it was behind him. So the Empire will get it back. Carnegie here gets it to Billy Katz. Katz with the fake, gets it to Auerbuck. Goes downfield, wide gainer for Bell. Bell now double teamed quickly here. And a foul on the mark. They were all over his arm there. And first call of the game. 10-yard penalty against the Phoenix, and Bell will walk it up to about the 20-yard line, 10 yards outside the end zone, and gets set to tap it in here. Throws the IO flick break, fake, and then Ooh. gets foot blocked with that same throw. Tried to throw the one that he had just faked, and Thurston gets a great foot block against him. Then, you know, that situation it seems like what looked like an intentional foul to uh, stop him from making that throw turned out to work. Thurston, looking for Esser, doesn't get it, swings across the field. Sam Morgan with it. He'll get it into the middle. Back to Thurston. Thurston playing well here in the early goings. Now Bouchek. A little bit of a host stack downfield from the Phoenix. Really looking for that fluidity, and now they'll go deep. Esser looking deep, and Billy Katz gets beat by Palumbo. Now they're just five yards outside in the end zone, looking to tie this game up. Yeah, it looks like uh, Billy Katz got lulled into uh, sleep there. And there is no call, so that is a score. The Phoenix tie it up at threes, five and a half to go here in the first quarter. It, it felt like the wind died down a little bit during the middle of that point, so that you know could have something to do with it. Uh, you know, open up an opportunity for them to make that long throw, but yeah, you know, and the, the umpire just, they, they, they aren't looking as uh, polished as they usually do. And we see some defensive line players in there on the O-line now. Luong out on the field, and here's Carnegie with it on the near side. He'll swing it back into the middle for Santosis. Santosis goes up to Bell. Bell's been getting that same cut all game. Footblock the last time. Now he'll go to the end zone this time. Not quite in. CJ Ouellette holding. Looks to Carnegie. Nice throw out into the space. Carnegie comes down with it. 4 3. The Empire over the Phoenix. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's obvious that the uh, personalities have kind of come together um, and that the team is meshing. They seem to know where to find each other. They, you know, and most importantly for a team is that they, they seem to each understand their, you know, one another's roles, um, you know, which is crucial if you're going to be successful. Empire pull heads out of bounds. 
So the Phoenix will center it up. And usually in these situations, we don't see a double team from the Empire. They like to trap on the sideline. Mm -hmm. And it does look like we'll see a pretty much a straight up man D vertical stack from the Phoenix. And Brandolph with the disc in the center. Sean Childers in coverage. Disc is in, whistles on, and the Phoenix moving it up the field. Yeah, that's a pretty standard, you know, a starting set play. Nothing fancy about it. Randolph, nice flick across the field into the break space. Now into the middle for Wolf. Wolf going to the end zone, and the Empire defender totally beat. Score is four to four. Four minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first quarter, and both offenses starting to look a little bit better and smoother out there. And now that the wind has moved to a crosswind, we aren't seeing that same up-down dynamic that we saw most of the game last week uh, with the Empire facing the DC Breeze. So. This week, both teams be able to score into what was the upwind end zone last week, and now we see a quick turnover and a very late foul call. It definitely looked like Bell was hit on the mark there by Thurston, but that was not an immediate call, and he looked around looking to the refs, and they gave it to him. So now Bell hits Hussein Carnegie. Carnegie comes to the middle, a little bit of a dicey throw there to Auerbach, but Auerbach makes the play. Now to Katz. Strike cut there from Santosis, covered well. Now Katz hits the next strike cut, more open there. Canetti. And we have a whistle. May have been a pick call in the stack. It's a pretty rare call. We haven't seen so many pick calls. I think the referee is starting to adjust to that. You know, it's difficult to watch the disc and the pick, so you have to have one guy watching sort of what's happening on the mark and another guy watching downfield and with so much action it has proven difficult in the AUDL to make those pick calls and then we do see the score a nice little play there CJ Ouellette coming across to the break from the break side to the fourth side and just a little flip up into the air five to four the Empire lead with three minutes 23 seconds to go in the game and these teams on paper, very similar. Mm -hmm. They both had losses to the Rush and a strange loss to Rochester, a team that these teams both expected to beat on the road, but Rochester has proven very difficult to beat at home. And so the Phoenix ahead just because they've played two more games and had two more wins than the Empire, but the Empire, if they do win this game, will take over second place based on win percentage. And both teams know the stakes, and we're seeing that here early, and a huge catch block there. What a play for Mike Drost. And Drost is gonna take the time out. Veteran call. And this is exactly what the Empire needed here. Just poached into that lane. He, the cutter just didn't attack the disc, and he went out and laid out completely full extension and grabbed that disc just away from his hands. With this double team, it's gonna Mess that plan up a little bit, though. And they, the classic out of the timeout double team has proven to be very successful for teams. And now Luong is going to go over the top of the hammer. It's floating up a little bit, but Bryant with the push off didn't like the contact from the defender. And, and Bryant just took that disc and shoved the guy to the ground. And we'll have to see what the referees make the call here. There was definitely some contact from the Phoenix player, but. And it looks like there will be no penalty whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe just a warning down there on the field, but Bryant not happy about the contact late. And now Bryant's going to throw out into the break space. A lot of players in the area. And the Empire are going to bring it down. An excellent play. Taylor Brooks brings it down in the back of the end zone despite two or three defenders on his back. And that gives the Empire a 6-4 lead with 2.20 to go in the first. With a tight game here, and that push off from Brian. We may see this game get a little bit chippy. These teams have been anticipating mm -hmm. this game for a lot of this season, and the refs are going to need to keep it under control. No call there, really an interesting decision from the referees as the Phoenix gets set to come back down the field and get back within one. Lu Wong thinks about the layout, doesn't make it. Kyle Wolf with it. Wolf pivoting, and he's going to put it deep. Nobody in the area. A little bit of a miscommunication with his deep cutters, and that's a free, free gift there for the Empire. With 1:55 left to go, and the clock ticking down here, 
the Empire with a chance to take a three-point lead and potentially into the second quarter. Yeah, that, you know, obvious miscommunication, the Phoenix, uh, comes at an unfortunate time because, you know, if the Empire are able to hold on to this disc for just, you know, a few throws, they'll be able to take the last shot. Wong to the far side. Ivers with it, gets it back to Wong. Will come around to Bryant. 123 to go in the quarter. Into the middle, Brooks. Back to Bryant. Bryant finds Brown. Lone Brown is going to rip the backhand down the field, but that's knocked down. Didn't quite get enough air underneath it, and it was too close to the ground. An easy block there for Stavinga. Yeah, surprising decision. Not something you see uh, Brown do very often, is try to move it downfield. Brandolph going downfield, looking for Wells. And Wells can't come down with it as great defensive effort from Drost. And we got 49 seconds to go. Clock counting down here. Luong will pick it up. And now clock management becomes important as they get to come back up the field here. They're going to want to hold this disc. Possession almost more important than a score here with a two-point lead. Wong holding, stall count getting high, and he turns it over. Tough turnover, and now Matt Esser is going to flip it into the end zone, and he, after turning it over, gets beat on the cut by Wolf, and Wolf scores 6 to 5, 28.3 seconds to go in the quarter. Certainly don't want to leave any more than five seconds on the clock here, unless you just get an obviously easy open look in the end zone. They made it easy for him with the short pull, but they're going to go with the uh, zone look to try to prevent the huck. So we do see the three man cup here. Empire moving it up the field, now beating the cup. Carnegie with it. 13 seconds on the clock, counting down. Auerbach, Auerbach goes to the end zone, and CJ Ouellette comes down with it in the end zone. Seven to five, nine seconds to go. So the Phoenix will have a chance to score here on the next possession. Alone Brown with the pull, just a standard pull down the field. It's going to come in at about the 15 yard line and it lands. Co clock counting down. Swinging across the field. Brandolph with it. Brandolph going towards the end zone, but it won't be enough. And that's going to go knock down. Not a deep enough throw to even have a chance. And so at the end of the first quarter, the score the New York Empire 7, the Philadelphia Phoenix 5. So we get set here to start the second quarter. Pull coming down. And it lands in the hands of Seth Canetti, who swings the disc up the sideline to Bell. Bell throwing the fake, finds Santosis on a wide open strike cut. Double team quick here from the Phoenix, but he gets it out to Bell. Now they'll go across the field to Auerbuck. Good offense here from the Empire, using the field well. Now all the way across, back to the middle for CJ Ouellette. Ouellette looking, swings across to Auerbuck, to Bell. Carnegie going, and Bell looking for Carnegie, but throws that with just a little too much zip. Little Carnegie ambitious. lays out, but can't quite get it. Little ambitious. You would, you know, I, I expected, you know, I, everyone saw that cut setting up. I expected that he was going to go to the backhand for a nice little floater out in front of Carnegie. Uh, instead, he went for the, the lightning bolt. Matt Esser checks the disc in for the Phoenix. They're looking for that wheel cut, isolation deep cut off the top. And there's an easy D there as Kennedy just bodies up in the lane and gets to that disc first. And that was just great system movement there, Charlie. When the Phoenix aren't getting their first look on offense, it's been difficult for them to really move the disc well. They like to look for that deep cut early. So across the field here, and quick dump back to Ouellette. And Cat Stevens can't come down with it, so it'll be Phoenix Disc, Esser again. Now this time they do hit that first cut. Things always move so much easier that way. This now with Bouchek. Comes around to Thurston. Thurston throws the backhand fake. Now flicks across the middle. Can't get handled by Steven Mager. So a bunch of turns here on this possession as we start the second quarter. And Santosis will pick up for the Empire. And he gets it to Bell. Bell has been wide open underneath in this game. And now another strike cut from Santosis, just burning his defender again. And up on another strike cut, 
That's our buck, and not great defense there from the Phoenix. No. As the Empire extend their lead to three, it's eight to five with 9.50 to go in the second. And you can see how much the Phoenix rely on Esser, who's been playing most points for the team, going both directions, offense and defense. And uh, you, know, you can see that reflected in his statistics, but also just in, in how well the Phoenix have played. You know, he's an excellent player and has really proven his value here in this second AUDL season. So the offense back out on the field as the disc swings out to the far sideline. And just a man defense here and a great layout block from Sean Childers, who just sort of fell in front of that cut and got his hand on the disc. Yeah, I'd be surprised if when we look at that on tape, if he actually touched it. He seemed to just fall down and scare the guy. May have been a pressure D. Lu Wong with it on the sideline. Gets it up to Joe Babino. Babino tries to float that in and it somehow connects with Izzy Bryant. Izzy Bryant throws the blade to the far side and that's easily knocked down, although it bounced almost into the hands of Childers who just wasn't expecting it and didn't catch it. So now the Phoenix with the disc, trailing eight to five, and they're gonna go deep here straight away, but defense in the area and a great block. Mike Drost, Drost that guy just again. Keeps doing it. Drost getting it done here for the Empire on defense. Some huge blocks, had the catch block earlier. And now centering to Wong. Wong goes to the outside for Drost. Back to the middle for Wong. Being a little stagnant. Wong looking to the referee, no call. They come to the outside as for a lone Brown, and Brown is going to fall down and make the play. Moving up the field, now some separation, and the backhand into the end zone for Childers, 9-5. to five. The Empire extend their lead to four, and things looking good here for New York. We talked about those strike cuts, but they haven't had success. They're going to need to use their physicality more. AUDL refs very low to call just contact downfield on cuts. So we'll see if those adjustments get made here during the second quarter, or potentially at halftime. And we have a whistle on the field. And uh, it's going to be a 10-yard penalty against the Empire for a push-off. And just as I say that they won't call that physicality, <laughs> they call it. Esser with the disc. Gets it to the near side for Stavinga. Stavinga into the middle for Brandolph. Nice break for Brandolph. Mike Coughlin. Back to Brandolph. Sean Anderson to Brandolph. You can see that the Phoenix handler is holding the disc a little bit longer than you really want them to if mm -hmm. you're the coach of the team. Yeah, they're, they're getting what seems to be, you know, for the most part, pretty easy movement, but it's not really moving anywhere. Uh, it's just, you know, hitting a spot, waiting for a couple of seconds, and then going right back. Stavinga finds Brandolph on the strike cut. Nice move there. A little quick double team. And they beat it, go to the middle to the unmarked guy. And then a huge block! Is it going to land in his hands? No. Spectacular play from Greg Somerville. And the Empire defense, impressive here early on against the Phoenix. Yeah, they, you know, they, they just forced them to go back and forth across the field until... Uh, an opportunity for a play happened. Brenton Hard holding, gets it ahead to Matt Lamar. Lamar finds Brown on the sideline. Brown goes up, easy underneath cuts, not in, but he will punch it in to Ben Ivers. And now the Empire rolling here at the start of the second quarter. It's 10 to five, and they've got three straight points here to start the quarter. And the Phoenix, lacking the intensity that the Empire have brought to this game. And, you know, one of the big question marks right now is where's Matt Esser? He's had a couple good plays in this game, but has largely been hanging out in the stack and not touching the disc maybe as much as the Phoenix would like him to as they look downfield. But Brandolph doesn't get anything underneath that disc, and it just turfs into the ground on the blade. Izzy Bryant now for the Empire as they come back up the field. And things unraveling here a little bit for the Phoenix. Lu Wong with it. The Empire defensive line has been very efficient today. 
Billy Katz gets it to Childers. Childers up the sideline for Brown. Brown recentering the disc. Things moving nicely for the Empire offense here. Big layout there. Doesn't quite get it. Looking for Bryant. And now to Katz, who goes to the end zone. And a layout grab in the end zone for another Empire score. 11 to 5. That last throw from Randolph, not a good one. And it looked to me that the Empire expected that look from them. Uh, and you know they they forced the bad throw because that is just, you know it's just it's not been a look that has been on for the Phoenix to, at any point today. Empire pull goes out of bounds at the 20 yard line. So the Phoenix will center this disc. See Matt Esser here on the close sideline. Sean Childers in coverage. He's going to have that matchup for most of the game. And Kyle Wolf will check it in. Wolf, stall count getting high, has nobody looking for something and manages to flip the disc out into space and it won't connect. That was just amazing on the disc defense. Excellent defense from the handler defenders and in the open side underneath area from the Empire. And they're looking to take this and score again here. Matt Lamar back to Childers. And Childers wants a timeout. Doesn't like the way that possession was looking. And knows the value of what a score could mean here. Would put them up by seven. It's 11 to five. Five minutes, 21 seconds to go. And the Empire take a timeout here after some spectacular defense on the first throw there. We see the offense taking the field for the Empire after the timeout. Of course, unlimited substitutions allowed during timeouts in the AUDL. So they'll put their offensive line out there to try to really convert this break. Auerbach with it. Comes to the near side for Santosa. Santosis to Carnegie. Carnegie looking to swing it. Goes up the sideline instead. Brenton Hard. Finds Santosis on another strike cut. Santosis has been getting that all afternoon. And now he'll go to Auerbach. Looks to swing it around. Not there. Double team. Good time to double team because Carnegie was open on the near side. Now they'll go to the middle to Bell. And Bell throws the flick. And does that stay in the air? No call yet from the referee saying out of, not in yet, but they will punch it in. Brenton Hard with the goal and a 12-5 Empire lead with four and a half to go in the first half. In the, in the first, almost the first half of the season, this is really just the beginning. Both of these teams you know, now playing uh, to get set for the second half of their season. So he played it for the first time last week and played limited points. And now he's been out there on the O-line and absolutely has had some, some crazy throws, but some good ones as well <laughs> as the Phoenix go deep and find Esser with separation on Childers. And now they're finally in a position to get a quick score here. They dump it back to Wolf. Wolf holding in the middle, looking. He'll get it back to Mike Coughlin. Coughlin swings back to Wolf. And they'll go to the end zone, and they won't connect. Another tough turnover for the Phoenix, and now they really need this one. So the Empire with an opportunity to take their lead to eight with three minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half. Lu Wong will take the disc to the line for the Empire. Soft mark trying to stop the huck. Long looking, fakes the high release back end, and now he'll come across the field, swing it over to Drost. Drost gets it back to Wong. Wong has really touched the disc a lot today, and that one floats a little too high up into that crosswind, the toughest throw there, that swing mm -hmm. to the upwind side, and a turnover right on the end zone, and now the Phoenix will have another chance, luckily, to try to punch this in, and they do, they find Esser, in the back of the end zone and finally get on the board here in the second quarter. It's 12 to 6 and they went on essentially a nine minute drought there. No scores until just yeah. there and they're back within six. It, you know, unless he gets to the end zone, that really just leaves him stranded down there by himself. So it surprises me that that's you know, such a main aspect of their playbook. But you know, even though they got that completed, they still weren't able to uh, get it past the Empire defense in the first go around. Empire offense back on the field. And one thing we will have to watch out for, the Phoenix have proven to be a second half team 
They were down against the DC Breeze yesterday and came back to win by a few points as they turned it on in the fourth quarter. Empire offense looking good here again. Carnegie with it, and he's going to float that throw. Not a good look to Bell. Maybe a miscommunication. Bell sort of going across and not coming underneath. No. Now we see the push off there from Thurston, and there's a whistle on the field. From where I'm sitting, it was pretty clear that uh, Carnegie got fouled pretty hard on that throw. He, I mean, he had left his pivot foot before he had even let go of that because of the contact. Surprised the referees didn't catch that. And I believe this call, yes, they are going to penalize the push off on the mark after letting Izzy Bryant get away with similar contact. And sideline wants a timeout for the Phoenix. So Thurston will set the disc down at about the 33 yard line. And they'll have their first chance to get a break here and coach wants to talk it over. And we see the double team straight off the timeout here but they'll get out of it with a little high-release floating backhand from Brandolph, and it comes back to Brandolph and the double team. He'll go up the sideline again to Coughlin, Coughlin to Brandolph. More double team and zoning look back to Coughlin. Now they'll move across the field. Wolf to Brandolph. He'll swing it back to the middle of the field for Coughlin. Low throw there, but it connects with Sean Anderson. More patient movement here than we've seen for most of the game from the Phoenix. Esser holding, gets it to the middle for Brandolph, dumps it right back, immediately back to Brandolph, who's running on Bell well. And now a big hammer across the field is going to trail away from the receiver, and he's not going to be able to make the catch. Ken Wells gets to it, but it bounces out of his hands. That's the second disc he's had touch his hands, but not complete. So now the Empire, with the disc right on their own end line, will have to go 80 yards for the score. Here's Katz. Katz gets it to Auerbach with just 60 seconds to go in the first half. And that disc goes through the hands of CJ Ouellette. A little bit of pressure there from Wolf. And Brandolph will pick up as they look to get this break before the end of the first half. Coughlin to Brandolph. And Brandolph's going to go deep. Some separation in the end zone for Matt Esser. And he comes down with it to get the break for the Phoenix. Their first of the quarter. It's 12 to 7 now. 36.3 to go in the half. They were doing a better job on that possession of stretching out the Empire defense by hitting those underneath throws and forcing the Empire to start to respect those a little bit more. We have a whistle on this pull, potentially an offsides call. And that will be the call. It looks like Phoenix heading down the field and the Empire looking to the referee to figure out what's happening here. He's explaining to them what exactly happened. It looks like it may have been offsides against the Empire as they will have to take this disc from their own end zone. No clear call from the officials here to the booth. They seem to still be talking it over. They're figuring out exactly where this disc should be set up and it looks like it is going to come in on the goal line with the Phoenix set up in their defense. So a great opportunity here for the Phoenix to get another break with 36.3 to go in the half. And we're underway here. Time ticking off. Santosis gets it to Ouellette who dishes nicely to Auerbuck. Fakes the backhand, doesn't take it. Strike cut shut off there. Much better defensive intensity here from the Phoenix. Santosis swings across to Auerbuck, who goes all the way across to Ouellette, who makes a nice play. And Auerbuck tries to, uh, excuse me, Ouellette tries to make a, a cheeky throw sort of before he set his pivot and it caught his receiver off guard. So with 10 seconds to go, the Phoenix now going to the end zone, looking for the play. Oh. And Carnegie gets up for that one. And now. Confused, and he's going to try to huck to the end zone as time expires in the first half. That's not going to reach the end zone, so it won't matter. And no call down in the end zone. Hussein Carnegie saving a point yeah. for the Empire. And your score at halftime is 12 to 7. CJ should be running over to Hussein to shake his hand right now because that, you, that was, you know, 
that was just not a play that you expect to see at this level. Uh, that, that was a pickup play. I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. So as we get set, the Empire will be pulling to start this second half, and the pull is up. Alone Brown pulling. It's going to hit the ground at about the 35-yard line and roll out of bounds. So we'll see if they put on a double team here. They have done that, but it looks like they won't the early going here. So they come up the sideline, the Phoenix, to Nick Ongpauko. And now we do see that double team, but he's going to get it off. And a big contact, and they are going to make a call. An excellent catch from Kyle Wolf with the contact from Luong, trying to get in front, but bodied out well by Wolf. So the penalty. And then Wong stuffs that throw into the ground with the hand block after that contact, maybe in his head a little bit, and just <laughs> pushed that one straight down. Yeah, well, that's you know, one way to get the disc back. He'll center to Izzy Bryant. Bryant around to Matt Lamar. Handlers working a bit amongst themselves. Now they will go upfield. And we have a travel call, and that's a turnover. So Wong traveled in the eyes of the referee after he had maintained possession and set his pivot foot. So in the AUDL, that's a turnover. And now the Phoenix will get the disc back. Joe Babino. Uh, excuse me, Stavinga with it, and Stavinga oh. goes to the end zone, and good defense again from Wong, but uh, now we have a whistle, so no score, says the referee. That's going to come back. Maybe that w play was never whistled in by the referees after the turnover. I don't know, Charlie, but it, it seems pretty clear to me that they had a conversation about pulling their whistles out at halftime, because that's, you know, a few pretty quick and you know, compared to some of the other stuff we've seen, pretty uh, uh, soft calls early on. Brandolph holding for the Phoenix, working it back and forth. Esser now goes around to the far side for Wolf. Wolf goes to the end zone, but a mother layout block from the Empire D line. Matt Lamar comes up with a big D for the Empire, and they'll get it back after the travel turnover from Luong. So it'll be Bryant picking up this time. And he'll go upfield right away. And now they will swing around to Wong. He's touched the disc a lot for the Empire defense, and they play on O. Esser goes up for it, but can't get it as it floats up past him. And now Brown gets bumped on the throw. No call from the referee, and it stays with the Empire. Drost with it, looking. Just outside the end zone, Izzy Bryant. Bryant looking to the end zone on the strike cut, but a great layout block from the Phoenix this time. He's saying that he was hit on the arm, the Empire receiver, but no call from the referee. So letting them play after some initial early whistle blows, and we see the quick double team. And now a whistle as the disc gets swung into the middle, but it's going to come back. Unfortunate for the Phoenix, honestly. They got it off the sideline where they wanted it, but they'll get a 10-yard advantage here, but that the double team will set right back up. Yeah, this is in my uh, favorite little segment by the referees here in the last few minutes. Esser to Brandolph. Brandolph with it on the sideline, and he's going to get through the defense there into the middle for Anderson. Anderson going downfield, but an easy block for Lu Wong, and just too aggressive there from Anderson as Izzy Bryant picks up. Bryant's going to come across to Brooks. Brooks to Brown on the near sideline here. Brown wanting to center it, does to Bryant. And here's Wong. And we now we see going deep, Jost looking for the end zone and finding it. Hits Ben Ivers on the streaking deep cut, and the Empire break to start this second half, and it's 13 to seven. The thing about it is that body contact on a catch, especially if you've secured the catch, isn't really that big a deal. Right. Sure, you want to make sure that people aren't, you know, doing dangerous plays or anything on those on those catches, but getting hit on the mark on your arm when you're trying to throw the disc, it's almost like in basketball when somebody hits your throat when you're shooting elbow, and you you, you simply can't get a quality shot off, you right. can't get a quality throw off. Mm -hmm. But they have not policed that at all this year, and it's been frustrating for some players who you know are getting hacked on the mark and unable to complete throws and watching it sail. And both teams on that last possession had that happen, as you pointed out. So now the Phoenix back on offense here. Brandolph on the sideline, gets the strike cut. 
and now they go to the end zone. Two defenders and an easy block there for Drost. That throw never quite reaching Esser. And now Brown picking it up, and Brown is going to put up a huge backhand, but no one in the area for that. Sort of a punt there. A little ambitious. He was looking downfield for Babino, but uh, didn't get it. So now, Phoenix with the disc again. Kyle Wolf. Too much close to the handlers there as he finds Brandolph, but some clogging here. Another layout from Sean Childers. Contact there, not called. Esser. Esser's going to go deep, flick to the end zone for Wolf, and they connect. Wolf getting some nice extension and good, good as we've seen all season from the Phoenix, good chemistry between Esser and Wolf. And the score now 13 to 8 with 7 minutes 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. So the Empire holding on to this five point lead after extending it to six with a break at the beginning of the half. And their offense heading back out onto the field and we need to see what the Phoenix show this Empire offensive line defensively as they've been getting beat fairly easily. Hussein Carnegie getting a lot of respect underneath and Carnegie's going to float that up. And there's so much space that wow. Ouellette is able to make the catch despite that not being a very good throw. And Ouellette will get it to Aaron Bell. Bell, bad throw, looking for Auerbach, doesn't get it out into the space and it's an easy block for the Phoenix defensive line. So now the Phoenix with a chance to get this break back and get it down to four point game. Yeah, another bad throw by Bell. Uh, still knocking the rust off. This comes back to Anthony, uh, excuse me, Michael Reeves. Reeves holding. Wow. And a big layout block from CJ Ouellette. An injury looks like on the field, Robert Allen on his knees here, but it looks like he's going to get up and walk off the field on his own accord. Maybe been a shoulder injury. And it looks like he was just a little bit shaken up on the play. And uh, it looks like he will take a sub. Big play from CJ Ouellette. Yeah, great D. Really, you know, just got there right at the last second. Just knocked it, you know, right out of the hands of a guy who pretty much thought he had a catch. Maybe the worst feeling uh, as an ultimate player is realizing you didn't quite run through that disc hard enough. Santosis goes up the field to Billy Katz. Carnegie with separation downfield, but picked up in coverage. Big layout there. Another injury. And we have another player. Is it an injury or is there a call on the field? 23 walking off. He fell down when Hussein made his cut. He's trying to guard Carnegie. Uh, That's Sam Esser. Matt's brother, and he will go to the sideline. And so two injury substitutions for the Phoenix on this point. So they trail by five, 13 to eight. Six minutes, 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. Billy Katz with the disc for the Empire. Billy Katz pushing the boundaries of what you're allowed to do within the rules in your hair. Yes, Katz <laughs> wearing a blue mohawk. One of the stranger haircuts you'll see in the AUDL. Canetti finds Carnegie, and Carnegie's going to go deep to Billy Katz, and that's a perfect strike to the back of the end zone for Katz. Those two have played together for years, played together on the NYU team, and Katz just finishing up his senior season at NYU this year, and playing here for the Empire and getting a nice separation there on that cut. So it's 14 to eight with six and a half to go in the third. Yeah, watching him run around the last couple of points, uh, I'm, I'm getting the impression that it's a conditioning issue. Uh, you know, he, he's clearly not in mid-season form and that can affect every aspect of your game. Joe Babino running down the pole extremely fast for the Empire as they set up a little bit of a junky zone here and showing a new look, the Empire defensive line. It's going to allow the Phoenix to get some easy underneath throws just near the disc, but not get much going downfield as they have somebody standing in the lane. So, junk defense from the Empire for the first time. Nick Ongpako with the disc for the Phoenix. He's going to go across the field. Nice throw through the middle to Stavinga. That's Matthew Stavinga. Now Esser with it, and he's going to hug it huge to the end zone, looking for Ken Wells. And Wells is going to go up and make the play. Was he inbounds? Yes, he was. 
What a play from Ken Wells and a massive throw from Matt Esser. Spectacular stuff there in the back of the end zone from the Phoenix. The Phoenix getting set to pull here. They, their defensive line has work to do for them to get back into this game. The O-line has been better in early going of this third quarter, but the D-line has yet to make much of an impact against this Empire O. They did get a turnover last possession, but couldn't convert it after a big layout from C.J. Ouellette, who holds the disc right now, for the Empire. Finds Carnegie. Carnegie with, to Katz. Katz wide open and a call on the mark. But Katz is going to come down with it. Travel. And it's a score. Okay. So the foul called on the mark against Thurston covering Carnegie. But Carnegie to Katz again for the Empire. And Katz with huge separation. And now, you know, the Phoenix needing to make an adjustment to take that away. Two easy throws to the end zone with a lot of space. And so the score now 15 to 9, Empire over the Phoenix with five and a half to go in the third. And that's been a struggle. Referees new to Ultimate. And of course, in USA Ultimate rule set that most of these players have been playing under for the entirety of their careers. Calls are made by, by the players themselves. And you don't have to rely on a third party official to make calls. But in the AUDL, everything called by the referees. As the Phoenix gets set on the, their offensive line coming back out onto the field. And good pressure here from the Empire early. Go across to Matt Stavinga. And just miscommunication with Coughlin. And so a turnover just five yards outside the end zone. Those are the kinds of costly mistakes that the Phoenix can ill afford at this point in the game, trailing by six. Five minutes to go in the third. Lu Wong, and it, Lu Wong with, gives it right back on a very similar type play, but looks like there's a call. Maybe some bumping in the stack, and Lu Wang gets bailed out, and he'll get to center the disc up on the foul in the stack against the Phoenix. Uh, that's so a fortunate play for yeah, the Empire. Yeah, big turn against the Phoenix. They thought they had a turnover, and now the disc is just in a more dangerous spot. Wong unlikely to make that mistake again, and he doesn't. He punches it in to Ben Ivers, who scores again for the Empire. Score now 16 to nine, and a lead back to seven, with four and a half to go in this third quarter. This is the biggest, tied for the biggest lead of the game for the Empire, who did lead at seven at one point in the first half before Philadelphia got a break late in the second quarter. And now the Phoenix offensive line needing to just be efficient and quick here on their possessions throughout the rest of the game to get that defense back out onto the field. So the offense, a little stagnant here to start. Good underneath defense from the Empire. And I find Brandolph though, it's separation on Bryant. And Brandolph's gonna put it to the end zone for Esser. And Esser easily comes down with it. Great connection there. Randolph to Esser, beautiful throw, and that's exactly what the Phoenix offensive line needed. Now score 16 to 10, Empire leading the Phoenix, and uh, just a 20 second possession there with 4.09 to go in the corner. But, yeah, it, I would have expected to see, a, you know, maybe a different change of strategy considering how little success they've had with that look so far. Pull lands inbound, Seth Kennedy for the Empire, gets to Bell, surprise Bell a little bit. Bell's gonna go across, but an absolutely amazing layout block. Wow, Michael Reeves gets way up in the air, shoulder height, and makes the play, and that's exactly what the Phoenix Dino had been needing, a big play to get something going. Sideline looking on expectantly now, as Bushek picks it up, and this is gonna be a critical possession for the Phoenix. Thurston holding, gets it in the middle for Esser. Esser. Goes up the field. Thurston wants it back, doesn't get it. Esser thinks about the swing, doesn't take it. Goes to the near side and a drop. That throw a little bit out in front of Kevin Chiang, one of the captains of the team, but he really should have had it and he didn't. There's whistles on the field. Block. Apparently there is no stoppage after all. So Thurston with it now, and now we do have another whistle. And it's a foul on the mark. So Thurston will advance 10 yards. And they're going to double team. Bell comes over to join Santosas, but they're going to throw a little. And another drop from Chang. And that's two back-to-back -back turns in a critical possession for the Phoenix. 
and Coach has got to be just fuming on the sideline. But an incredible layout block on the mark from Esser. What a play, and Hussein Carnegie has to give some respect for that because he wound up for a huge backhand huck, and Esser came through and went horizontal to stop that throw up field. And now the Phoenix with a third chance, and they go to the end zone, and they punch it in. Yeah. Great throw from Thurston up the <laughs> sideline to get the Phoenix back within five with two and a half to go in the quarter. Yeah, I think it was easy to uh, laugh that off at first for Carnegie because you know he, he did wind up for that backhand, and Esser, he took a shot uh, c catching that disc where he did. Um, apparently, his uh, joviality has gotten the best of him and his teammates this time, though, because they all stopped and just watched the Phoenix score. So now, the disc coming back must have been a whistle on the field, so no score for the Phoenix. They'll have to tap it back in on the sideline. And we'll probably see the double team from the Empire here. Thurston. Unclear exactly what happened. And communication between the players and the referees. And the referees in the booth has not been very good. And it's been difficult to know quite what's going on down there. So now we do see the double team from the Empire. Thurston holding. And he's going to put up a big hammer to swing the disc across the field. Nice throw there. And it's Palumbo with it, dumps it back. And now Chiang makes the catch, throws up to Esser. Esser goes into the middle. Poach on the far side of the end zone, but they don't see him. Thurston, looking. He's gonna go and try to throw the inside out flick, but it's well behind Esser. So another turnover from the Phoenix. And it's just very costly mistakes here from the Phoenix, well, but an easy play there. It's just a sloppy point here from both teams. Chiang gets the D on an easy run through. I think maybe the thrower didn't see him. So Esser with it now and holding, looking, swings. Phoenix waiting, really looking like they're trying to find something quick instead of working the offense. And Esser's gonna go to the to the near side, but just puts it into the ground, but there is a call. So, it's gonna be a, should be a 10 yard penalty. Nope, it looks like maybe there was a timeout call before that foul call. It, it seemed to me that the referee had signaled something. It's hard to tell what the whistles are associated with because they seemingly blow at random times. Disc now not blown in yet. And now the whistle is in. So under, underway here, Stavinga looking and he'll swing the disc. And it'll come all the way across to the near side. Mike Coughlin looking, goes up the field. Oof, layout block attempt against Esser, doesn't get it. Esser throws the flick and then a huge layout block. The Empire just getting block after block. And once again, Ben Ivers coming up with a big play in this game on that layout. So now the Empire defensive line, uh, excuse me, offensive line back underway here. Moving downfield. Drost gets the disc to Ivers who has to lay out again. Big point for him. Ivers gets it to Babino. Ooh. Great D. And again, Esser making the play. Right. And he's really come up big for the Phoenix, and this is what we expected all along. And 10 seconds to go in the quarter here. So Brandoff's going to put it up to the end zone, but that's going to be an easy block for the Empire. And Carnegie tries to put it back down the field, but uh, it won't get out of his hands in time, and it won't get anywhere near the end zone. So the pull is up, Matt Esser throwing it down the field to about the 25 yard line. And a quick D from Kevin Chiang who's gonna make up for his mistakes on this last point, and they do punch it in immediately. That's exactly what the Phoenix needed to kick off this quarter. He gets it to Bushek for the goal. 11.52 to go. We're basically restarting the fourth quarter, but the Phoenix now only trailing by five. Yeah, we talked about how they're going to need to start scoring quickly. Well, they, they did it as quick as they could that time. Pull lands just in bounds. Auerbuck picking up for the Empire. Gets it into the middle, and Bell 
looks upfield before he could cure the possession, and he drops it. So now the disc in the hands of Bushek, and they're looking to score again here, and not quite in the end zone, so they'll come reset it in on the line. That's Reeves with the disc. Reeves looking, nobody there. Swings to the middle for Esser. Matt Esser, Bell on the mark. Matt Esser throws around for the break, and that's a score for the Phoenix. And in just 40 seconds, the Phoenix have two scores. The score now 16 to 12, and everything going wrong for the Empire at the start of this fourth quarter. 16 to 12 the score, 11 23 to go as the Phoenix come down again here on defense and now maybe in the heads a little bit of the Empire. Dis comes to the sideline for Brenton Hard. And Hard's going to go down the field looking for CJ Olette. Will it come back in bounds? It doesn't matter because an absolutely massive layout block, catch block from Michael Reeves, an amazing play, and he gets it to Esser straight away. And everything going right for the Phoenix D-line right now. Into the middle. Now on offense. That throw is going to float up a little bit, but it works perfectly. Goes over the head of the defender. Now moving easily up the field, and they're going to go to the break side. Nobody in the area on defense. And Spike on the score with 10.40 to go. The Empire now only lead the Phoenix by three. Brenton Hard, who threw that disc, looking for Roulette. Not a normal O-line starter for the Empire, and we do see that they have their starting seven back out on the line for this point as they look to stop the bleeding here in the early going. Hussein Carnegie lays out for the throw, but can't make the catch. That disc way out in front of him. And another turnover from the Empire. And it's Bushek picking up for the Phoenix, and we have a whistle. He didn't set his pivot foot in the right place, and so they'll move him back to the 41 yard line. About 20 yards outside the end zone, excuse me, 30 yards outside the end zone. The disc with Thurston goes into the middle for Esser. Pochi Mark from Hussein Carnegie. Dish to Thurston. Carnegie giving Esser a lot of room. Now Esser getting in front of Carnegie. Nice try to make the block from Carnegie, but can't get there. Esser, stall getting high, gets it off to Thurston. Phoenix really relying on their top guys on this possession. It's mostly been Thurston and Esser so far. Now that throw Ooh. partially blocked potentially, but Thurston comes up with a big grab, and it'll go straight back to Esser. Esser looking downfield, wants the huck, doesn't have it yet. Thurston in the space, and Billy Katz gonna lay out and make the block. And now everybody wanting a foul call, and they are gonna give it to them. There's some confusion among the referees. I don't think they've made a call. I think they're considering making a call. And definitely some contact between Cats. And it is a turnover. So despite the heavy contact, no call from the referees. And Sentosis will pick up for the Empire and get it around to Auerbach. Yeah, I think that's a good no call, Charlie. It seemed like uh, Cats had gotten the disc before any contact was made. Going across the field to Ouellette. And they'll go to Bell, almost out of reach. And Bell's going to put up a huge backhand looking for Kennedy. Can Kennedy get there? Not quite. Kennedy doesn't quite have the foot speed to reach that disc. A huge throw from Bell. Yeah, I don't think that uh, Kennedy was his intended receiver when he let that go. It looked like Carnegie kind of uh, made a cut back right after the release. Palumbo gets to Thurston, and Thurston turns it over immediately, and Bell putting that one out into space safely for Carnegie. Carnegie going up the field to Bell. Phoenix defense looking a little tired, and then Bell just tries to throw a backhand where he should have thrown a flick, and he turns it over right back. So here's Esser. Esser throws the fake on the backhand, and now he'll put the backhand up, and nobody in the area. So a lot of turnovers again for both teams. Fatigue starting to set in here yeah. in this fourth quarter. Yeah, that, that I think was, uh, you, you said it, you know, the fatigue is setting in. I think that was as much a punt as it was an actual attempt. You know, Esser's a little bit smarter of a player than to think that somebody's going to go up against Carnegie and get it in that kind of open space. Aaron Bell goes up the sideline to Santosis. And back to Bell. Bell's going to make the grab. Katz is open, but Bell is going to put that out. And 
Cats is going to lay out for it, but another turnover from Aaron Bell, who's been the leading turnover man for this Empire offensive line. And some critical mistakes here in this fourth quarter. It's seven and a half to go. 16-13, the Empire lead. And the Phoenix defense giving the Empire offense all kinds of problems right now. Here's Esser with the disc. He's going to go around to Thurston. Back to Esser. These two have touched the disc 90% of the time on this point. Thurston looking. Not a whole lot of action downfield from the Phoenix. A lot of standing, and we may have a stall out. No, I think that Bell not close enough maybe to be near the stall, and, and it's going to be a timeout. Phoenix sideline, coach wants a timeout after a pretty stagnant downfield cutting yeah. and tired legs from the Phoenix. So we see some substitutions, of course, on the field. The defensive line out there for the Empire and looking to get fresh legs out there, both teams, after a sloppy point with a lot of turnovers. So stall getting high here. They're going to go into the middle. They do connect. It's Kyle Wolf with the disc. Wolf's going to go up into the middle. Nice grab there. Comes around to Ken Wells on the sideline. Wells sees the strike cut, looks for it. Bump, bump on Wolf. No call. Frustrated with the referees, Lu Wang and Wolf making some contact. And now a foul called against Wolf. So a 10 yard penalty, maybe some frustration from Wolf on that play. Luang will advance the disc up to the 25 yard line, 15 yards outside the end zone. And we got some whistles on the field. Guess that disc never got called in. And so, well, no, they're gonna send them back 10 yards. Must have been a foul, another point on the field. So disc now live again. Wong looking to the end zone. Randolph in the area on coverage. And is he in? Yes, he is. That's the score for the Empire on the line. He toes the line to put the Empire back up by four with 6.15 to go. Unfortunately for the Empire, that was still just an offensive possession. And it took them two or three minutes to score and about six or seven turnovers. Mm -hmm. So now their defense back out on the field, and if they could score here, they can basically put this game away yeah. or close to it. But if the Phoenix can stay scoring efficiently on offense, they're still gonna have a chance in this game. Clearly the Empire not playing their best ultimate in this quarter as the disc gets centered to John Stavinga in the middle of the field for the Phoenix. They'll get it to Brandolph. Randolph up the field, a lot of contact, no call from a, on a lone Brown with the contact on Esser. Esser is going to hit the strike cut, Brandolph, easy, lots of space for him, he wants the huck, it's not there. Now he's going to go up the sideline, nice movement here for the, one of the first times we've seen this really from the Phoenix, and they go up the field and it's Esser, somebody dropped off, maybe wanted to switch, didn't get it, so Esser punches it in, that's exactly what the offense needed to do for the Phoenix, it's 17 to 14. Was that 29 seconds? 5.46 to go in the quarter. Yeah. Time management so critical at the end of the game. Team still figuring out the best way to manage the clock. So it's 17-14, the New York Empire leading the Philadelphia Phoenix. They had a six point lead to start this quarter, but Phoenix rattled off three straight. And so now the three point lead, the Empire needing to figure out what they need to do better on offense, which is basically take care of the disc. Here's Billy Katz with it on the near sideline. He wants to swing. Everything covered up. Good defense right here from the Phoenix, but he does eventually get it off. Seth Canetti comes to the sideline for Santosis. Santosis wants it. Carnegie going deep, but they're bracketing him downfield. Canetti. Billy Katz open, gets looked off. Canetti goes around to Auerbach. Handlers working it back and forth. Burning time, which maybe what they want to do. And there's the drop. There's a drop from Canetti, and that's what the Phoenix needed. 4.58 on the clock, three-point game, and here come the Phoenix, and it's an easy score from Chiang to, to Esser, captain to captain, and the lead for the Empire now just two with four minutes and 53 seconds to go in this game near the goal line. And so he's benched for this point. Seems a little reactive to me. I, I would say that that turn was on the thrower more than the Receiver. Empire offense has been very tight this entire fourth quarter. 
trying to do too much. A lot of players. So now here's Hussein Carnegie, double team. And he's going to get it off. Low throw, but gets it to Auerbach. And now Brenton Hard reaches out with one hand. Instead of just trying to catch it with two, reaches out with one hand and he drops it. So the Phoenix get a chance here to get it back within one, but it's going to be CJ Ouellette who may make the hero play of the game with a huge layout at midfield. And Luang trying to calm everyone down, saying, hey, take a deep breath as Joe Santosis picks it up. The Empire needing a score. Santosis gets it to the far side, back to Ouellette. Ouellette throws the fake, now throws the throw. It's Cat Stevens. Stevens swings to the middle for Auerbach. Big layout, takes his legs out, and there will be a call on that. Those are the kinds of plays you really have to watch out for. That was John Stavinga in coverage. I'm sorry, that was Robert Allen in coverage on the layout there. Big bid. I don't think there's any, any negative, you know, sort of attack there. He was just trying to make the play. It was a little bit late to the throw and chopped the legs out of underneath from Auerbach. So now some confusion, and they'll get it set up here. About eight yards outside the end zone. Auerbach with it. And there's a strike cut from Santos, and it was too quick out of Auerbuck's hands. And so we see another throw from Auerbuck, not connecting. Esser's going to pick up. Throws a couple fakes and gets it into the middle. Patience has been better from the Phoenix. Three minutes, 43 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. 17-15 your score. The Empire up by two against the Phoenix, who have been rallying back from a six-point deficit to start the fourth. And they're now moving up the field to try to get back within one in this game. Step around, contact, no call. Matt Esser with it. He's going to swing to the middle for Thurston. Thurston and Esser have been dominating the disc on offense for these Phoenix. And now, coming up the sideline, going to the end zone. Hussein Carnegie makes a huge bid, but it's going to be a better play from the Phoenix receiver who gets it in front of the bidding Carnegie. Incredible play from both players. Carnegie visibly angry on the field after not coming down with that one. The score is now 17 to 16 for three minutes to go, and we're getting exactly what we might have thought we would have at the beginning of this game, yeah. but maybe not in the way that we would have thought it would have happened. Well, yeah. Uh, Robert Allen making the huge grab in the end zone there for the Phoenix, and, and you know, I don't even know if he needed to actually lay out to catch it, but he sensed Carnegie coming in and maybe heard the footsteps and laid out in front to get the grab. The play maybe of the game for the Phoenix. And the Empire offense looking better here. Cats open deep. CJ Ouellette looks him off, and he's going to hit the strike cut. Joe Santos is there. Carnegie going to the end zone, coming back underneath. And then Santos will hit Carnegie. Now just about 10 yards out, and Carnegie's going to throw the massive hammer to the far side for Bell. And that is the kind of play that you want to see from your stars. Carnegie's fired up, and the Empire back up by two. Two minutes, 46 seconds to go in the game. Yeah. Like we've said countless times, their def you know, the Empire defense is what usually keeps them in it. And if you know they're not playing well, then and the offense isn't playing well, then you know it's a recipe for disaster. Bold throw from Carnegie there, especially considering how many turnovers the offense has had. But he goes for the riskiest throw and finds the space. So now, Phoenix offense back out on the field. Randolph with the disc comes to the near side for Stavinga. That's John. Randolph looking, throws a little shoulder fake, gets it to Esser. Esser with the one step pivot gets it around the field. Both teams looking a little bit gassed, running hard, try to get into this game. Phoenix needing this point to stay within it, get back within one. Two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Esser holding. Throws a little inside out backhand round and now they'll go to the end zone and they'll punch it in. Big spike from Ken Wells with the score 18 to 17. The Empire up one. One minute and 54 seconds on the clock. Starting line out of there on offense for the Empire. They scored their last offensive possession. Pretty nice motion up the near sideline and then a big hammer over the top from Carnegie to Bell. So the disc comes down to Canetti, who centers to Santosis. Santosis wide opens Hussein Carnegie in the middle. Really don't want him to get it deep. 
to find CJ Ouellette. 60 yards to go. Santosis has been getting open on that strike cut all game. Finds Bell. Bell looking to the end zone. Doesn't have it. Now goes to Katz. Bell looked off a throw for the first time there. Katz swinging. And there is going to be a foul call against Palumbo for a bump on the mark. And, you know, it's so inconsistent, that call. The Empire are lucky to get it in this situation. Mm -hmm. You know what that reminds me of? That's uh, you know, I, I could hear from the press box the, the slap of the two hands. It's like the, the broken stick in hockey. It's now just an automatic slash. Santosis swings around to Canetti. About 15 yards outside the end zone, the Empire can go back up by two. One minute, 11 seconds to go in the quarter. And the game. Here's Bell. Bell throws the fake, holding. There's a strike cut. They're going to go to it, and they get it. Seth Kennedy gets into the near cone. Perfect throw from Aaron Bell on that one. And now the score is 19-17. The Empire up by two with just a minute to go in the fourth quarter. Clock management more important now than ever. Here's the pull from Alone Brown. Good one. It's going to float down into the end zone. And here comes the Phoenix offensive line. They'll send it to Brandolph. Coming to Esser. Esser, you know he wants the huck, doesn't get it. Swings it over to John Stavinga. Going back to Esser. Not a lot downfield, but he's going to put it up anyway. They need it right now. Goes downfield, and in a huge grab. Wow, Ken Wells goes up and gets it over, over Sean Childers in coverage. What a play from Ken Wells, who's been having a few in this game. And with now 43.9 seconds on the clock, the Phoenix can break to tie this game and potentially take it to overtime. So it's score 19 to 18, 43.9 seconds on the clock. Here's the pull. The Empire can w run out the clock on this game if they just swing it back and forth. So we'll have to see what kind of pressure they're getting. But they're going to go up the field. Here's Carnegie with it. Looks off CJ Ouellette. Now the double team. Stall getting high. Hussein Carnegie has to go over the top. And that's a turnover. The double team at the perfect time from the Phoenix. And it'll be Thurston picking up. 27 seconds on the clock. They go around the outside looking for Esser. And Esser drops it, but he gets bumped hard by Carnegie in coverage. And that'll be a foul call. The clock will stop. 20.9 on the clock. Esser with the disc in his hands. The score 19 to 18. The New York Empire up by just one. And the Phoenix with a chance to tie this game. Oh, man. This is, this is reminding me of LeBron's two turnovers at the end of that game against the Pacers. Carnegie first throwing the disc away and then that terrible foul. Just, you know, it's, it's the worst time for your best players to not be playing great. Esser gets it to Thurston. 18 seconds on the clock. Back to Esser. Esser holding, 14 seconds. Looking, nothing there. Gets it into the middle. Finds Thurston, nine seconds on the clock. Seven seconds on the clock. Thurston holding, needing something. Five, four, three. Go to the end zone. Big block in the end zone. And that's gonna do it for the New York Empire as they get a layout block in the end zone to run the clock out on the Phoenix. And the final score, 19 to 18. They had a six point lead to start the fourth quarter and watched it disappear as the Phoenix defense played better than ever. Yeah. And came all the way back in this game and with five seconds on the clock had a chance to win it, but got stagnant at the last. And as they tried to punch it in, CJ Ouellette came up with another huge play mm -hmm. to get the block and the win for the New York Empire.